So right. people eat shit. That's right. And so the, the, the operation that cuts the shit makes a threat to the opposition. So the build up, the build up, the build up. And it's happened in multiple situations. Even the East Coast, West Coast robbery was a was a build up. Right. This was a secondary plan for the Bloods versus the Crips thing that got smothered over by the young men who I remember I was in L.A. when they all went to the park and they put the tanks up there. They tried to provoke them in the fight, have a picnic together. And I forget what the park was out there. Uh, Brother Collard, they all had a picnic and the, and the feds and, uh, and uh, Gates was still police chief then. They were incensed. They tried to propagate this thing into something to keep them from laying the rest. Uh, disagreements. Then that brought us to the other uh, uh, question about what role does rap play in black liberation? Mm. And I have had to say that up until this point, uh, in 92 we did the lecture, the attack on rap and other black youth. And in that lecture I had schemed that this manifestation of young black men who were creating their own music with limited overhead Scratch, 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 scratch. Uh, that's limited overhead. That's why I'm so hot on these athletes because, again, if you are Dennis Rodman or Michael Jordan, you don't need to build a factory. You don't need to pay workers. You ain't got unemployment insurance on your million or two million that you're worth. These are men who ain't got nothing but gym shoes free, gym shorts, jock straps, t-shirts. Limited overhead operation. Now you've got five, ten, thirty million with nothing to have to pay but your house note. Mm. So your money might be greater than another man who might be worth three million, but got sixty employees, and anything can happen to him at any minute. Mm. So we've got this misappropriated construction. So now we have. Remember, it went through with the public enemy thing over Professor Griff and Chuck D and right. Jewish people. There you go. And Dittenkoff, who was head of CBS, who jerked them in. They had Public Enemy didn't get paid for album number one, didn't get paid for album number two. They were in court fighting with CBS to get the money. It was about 275000 per person online. And all they kept doing was dangling it. Well, you know, we still got to go over to the court. Well, okay, sir, we're going. We'll wait. We'll wait. We'll hold. Uh, and uh, they just had a reunion conference, a uh, reunion concert a couple of weeks ago. Uh, in New York, Madison Square Garden, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, Madison Square Garden uh, with uh, KRS-One, Public Enemy, and um, DNC, right, and they even brought Griff up with Public Enemy. Uh, uh, so it's taken all these years to recover from the initial attack. And then we went in 94 and did it again. This was during the Sister Soldier crisis when, when, uh, when, uh, when it was a boy Clinton, I uh, pulled Sister Soldier out like a prop at the Jesse Jackson conference on a four-minute speech about she was at war with white people. It made her renounce that she didn't really mean that. Sure did. And you know they had a secret press conference. They tried to have a secret press conference right over here in the auditorium of the Blackburn Center. They came in and told me because Sister Soldier got a secret press conference here tomorrow. And I said, why would we want her to meet in secret with whites? Mm -hmm. And I told the audience that night, and everybody showed up the next day, they had a huge press conference, and it protected her. So that when they asked her a bad question, the audience hissed and booed in a way that they resented bad dialogue. You need, don't nobody need to be going away with no whites all alone, like that's they don't right. resolve the dilemma. And the whites get through repaint everything they're saying, that's not gonna happen. <laughs> so we went through it with Sister Soldier. Sister Soldier's not even a rapper anymore. Mm -hmm. In other words, there have been casualties on the way to these casualties, but now shooting has become the last option of the army. All right. That's right. When Zig Brubersinski, we were right over here at the conspiracy to destroy black men, Zig Brubersinski, out of control, uh, glo uh, uh, global turmoil to the 21st century, how will the white man deliver on the new federation? Right. He said, the predominant threat to the new world order was what? Young, young black men. Young black urban males. Now, what is college factor with a young black urban male? Mm -hmm. What is Malik's factor with a young black urban male? And if it has deep potential, then we needed our own intelligence analysis to have forecast the fact that we were ringing the bell in such a way that we had to take a deeper precautionary context.
But then we're all we're not necessarily all unified on the end part of the game. Open and close and middle. Uh, we did Revolution 101. And that was an excellent lecture you did for reality speaks on revolution in, in uh, Baltimore that night. It had some good good Check. science in it. Check. Good science uh, 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 categories, revolution, what you do, when you do that. Uh, you were up in the lounge one night, uh, back in the winter or something. Uh, not too long ago, you was there, Scotty was there. Uh, um, I forget the area, but it was an excellent discussion about the format and categories towards unfolding an organization towards a revolution. And the bottom line is, all of our end games are not the same. People do not perceive all of the same endings. We ain't never had a conference on the end of what ills us. Mm -hmm. Ain't nobody ever saw it through that far. Ain't nobody ever felt that, because when you get close enough to them, they tell you, well, you know, oh, 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 America will overwhelm you. How can you talk to America like that and be tax exempt? Now, how are we going to get a grant when you're talking like that? <laughs> because what was really on the line was grant money, not honor or morality. Check. We don't have any sacred uh, moment for the abuser. They're supposed to get dirt, dog, knife, stab, kick, right. bottle right. rub. That's when do right. we start putting on gloves and dinging the bell after three minutes and sitting on a stool getting wiped off? Mm. That's right. When do we start doing that? That's right. <laughs> Let me come back. I'm going to come back on my big conference next month and I'm going to get you. We ain't. It's not, it's not that. <laughs> that doesn't have an end game to it. See, why don't we have an end game? See, in the end game, I just tell you simply how I see it. In a chess match, you've got all sorts of players when the game starts. In the beginning of the game, you use your pawns to take control of the board. Anybody here play chess? Anybody here play chess? If you use your pawns effectively to link them together to get control of the board the way you want to fight, your middle game will unfold about the way you want it. How would I want my middle game? I'd like to trade my rook, trade my Jesse Jackson for their path to Canada. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like, like to trade my rooks. If I saw the opportunity to get them two off of the board, I'd take them out. Let them mutually cross each other out on crossfire one night and just push them on out the street. They started with cross out. I'm in the middle game. Mutual cross out. Mutual cross out. So, in your middle game, you trade your bishop for a knight. You may even trade the rook for a bishop. An unequal trade, because what you want to do is you want to get rid of these bigger pieces now. Now you don't have a need for Jesse Jackson or the Ministerial Alliance. You don't have any need for the Association of Black Educators. You can trade them away. Trade them away for the white educators. Trade the black psychologists for the white psychologists. Trade the NBA for the ABA. These are lawyers now, not basketball. <laughs> <laughs> Trade them away. Trade the black doctors for the white doctors. Trade them away. Because ain't no revolutionary black doctor breaking down the tenets of white medicine. That's right. That's right. Ain't no revolutionary black lawyer breaking up the legal scheme. Over. Right. It ain't going on. So since the professions aren't busting up the professions, let's trade them off. 